Good morning, everyone. We're ready to get going. How is everyone doing so far today? Good? Okay, awesome. All right, this morning we have uh, a treat for you. We have uh, Adelet and Otimo. They are solutions architects at MongoDB, and they're going to speak, be speaking to us on the topic, load testing MongoDB with Locust.io. The stage is yours. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our lightning talk on load testing MongoDB with Locust.io. You know, load testing is critical for the success of almost any application, but getting it right can be a challenge due to several reasons. Today, we want to talk to you about these challenges and how we have been able to overcome them within our solution architect scheme um, by using Locust.io and how we have simplified load testing MongoDB with Locust.io for you. We will show you how easy it is to develop customized load tests in pure Python and scale them to hundreds of thousands of requests per second while having the possibility of visualizing the results in real time. All right, thank you very much, Adilet. Also, good morning from my side and let's dive into it. So, load testing is actually very important and let's talk quickly about why you should care about it. Well, first of all, load testing allows us to validate the data model <coughs> that we're using for our application. While our data model might be just fine, while we're handling a couple of thousand of documents, when you're looking to handle millions of documents, the data model becomes much more critical and you want to validate the impact on the performance. Also with load testing, we can estimate the database size for production load, right? Something that's especially important to us as solutions architects when we talk to our customers. Of course, with Atlas, it's very simple to scale either with the click of a button or Atlas will do it manually, uh, automatically anyhow. However, when we engage with customers, we want to be sure to you know, do proper advice on, on sizing. And the last aspect is of course, it also allows you to simulate the impact of um, same operations at the same time on the same document, right? That's one aspect that might be, for, or that people might forget when talking about um, sizing the database or the impact it might have on the performance. However, load testing can be very hard. And for that reason, sometimes it's neglected. But what makes it so hard? So a lot, is, uh, a lot about the difficulties are around the tooling. Because when you want to do truly load testing, you need to be able to provide your very custom queries that you run. You need to provide your very own document model or your data model. And um, that is actually not a simple task, as we will see later. The next thing is when you use uh, uh, your own custom data model. You want also to account for logical dependencies in your data set. For example, if you do load testing with, let's say, a dollar group, but you don't have any documents in your data set that match the criteria, you will taint your load testing results. And lastly, the tooling part needs to be scalable. Because if you're looking to simulate production workload, just running on a single machine might not be sufficient. So being able to scale your load testing tool is very important. So there are a number of tools available and here are some of the ones that I had my fair share of experience with. The first one is the WCSB or the Yahoo Cloud Service Broker, or oh, Benchmark called, or there's also a MongoDB tailored version uh, from John Page which you can find on GitHub and it's called POC Driver. This tool is very easy to use. It's more or less just running one command. It will give you very extensive um, statistics on the database performance. So on that part, it works great and it does its job well, which is benchmarking database solutions. However, it is fairly difficult up to impossible to provide you very custom queries to it and provide your own data model to it. And scaling is possible, but rather difficult. Another tool is JMeter. JMeter is a well-known um, performance testing tool. It is also very powerful. Um, it can, you would use it with the MongoDB Java driver if you're looking to implement your own custom code there to test it. Um, and it can scale. It has a great UI. However, as a first time user, it is actually rather hard to utilize. So it takes some time to get used to it and scale it. And the last option I want to mention is, of course, developing your very own tool. In a 
that would be an ideal case, right? If you would have all the time of the world, you could develop your own load testing tool, you could take care of all dependencies that you need to look out for, you can make it very customizable to fit to your specific use case, um, and scaling and usability, you can take care of that, right? The only problem with that is, if you're looking to develop all aspects of a load testing tool yourself, it will actually cost you a lot of time and effort up to the point where it's more or less undoable. And therefore, Adilat is gonna introduce us to Locust.io, which is looking to combine the benefits of a pre-built tool and a custom development. Thank you, Timo. So what is Locust.io? Locust.io is an open source performance testing tool that is being actively developed and used by companies like Google, AWS, Microsoft, and many, many others. With Locust.io, you can define your load tests in pure Python. And as you know, Python is one of the most uh, popular programming languages, and there are libraries for almost every thinkable and unthinkable scenario uh, that you could use for your tests. But being able to write your tests in pure Python is not the only advantage of uh, Locust.io. With Locust.io, you can scale the workload due to its uh, distributed architecture, and you can also visualize the results in real time and control your tests through a built-in GUI that is being exposed uh, by a built-in web browser. So um, let's look at the most basic example of creating a test workload in Locust. Here on the slide, um, we can see this example. So what we need to do is to define a new class that, we call, that will contain the operations that we want to run against our database. And then every instance of Locust will instantiate uh, an instance of this class and basically start running the operations uh, that are defined within it. So let's go over the code from top to bottom. There are a few things that I would like to highlight here. The first is the optional possibility of setting the sync time between the um, execution of operations. And here we are saying that Locust should wait between one and five seconds um, after running a certain operation. The next thing I would like to highlight is the onStart method that is gonna get executed every time a new test is started. And here, within this method, um, we are creating uh, a collection with one index defined on, defined on it. The actual work, the actual operations that we want to run against our MongoDB database are implemented in the, de um, in the insert document and find document methods. And here you see that we are just using the standard APIs provided the Python driver um, of MongoDB. But what we do on top is mark this method with the add MongoDB task decorator and specify a wait for every task. So the way that Locust works is actually um, running in an infinite loop, selecting the next task, executing it, waiting for a wait time it has been specified, and then selecting the next task. And the probability of it selecting a certain task on the next iteration is equal to the weight of this task divided by the sum of all weights. So this means that in this case, we have a weight of one uh, for the insert document and a weight of three uh, for the find document. And through this configuration, we will have 25% of inserts and 75% uh, of finds running against the database. And this is a very basic example. Of course, um, it can be, uh, you can define additional methods, use aggregation pipelines, whatever APIs or operations you want to use, everything is available in local. Now let's say uh, we are done uh, with defining our operations, we've done coding, we've tested it, it works. What we need to do is to run it. And the most simple way of doing it is using Locust in a local mode. And in this mode, um, the master, and this is the official term used in the um, project documentation, and the client and the worker uh, will be running within the same Python process along uh, with the web GUI uh, and in this mode, it is extremely easy to run Locust. You just use a Locust and specify the file which contains the class that we've just defined. Running Locust from your uh, local laptop uh, is good for development, but has its obvious limitations. Uh, more significant workloads will need to use the distributed mode. And in this mode, we have a set of workers that are running the operations that we defined in our class, and then a single master instance that is collecting the stats and exposing them through a web interface. And since Locust is nothing else but a pure Python, we can easily containerize Locust and deploy it into a Kubernetes environment. Managed Kubernetes services provided by most of the cloud providers 
are getting really, really good at scaling the compute. So through the scalability, we can also scale our workers and achieve hundreds of thousands of requests per second. So initially, <coughs> Locus was developed for HTTP-based load testing. Uh, but it can also be easily extended to support any target system. So what we have done um, is publish our extension that we have been using internally and call it Mongo Locus. So let's look at what comes with Mongo Locus by default. So first of all, it's the MongoDB task decorator that we talked about that converts any method that you define in your class into a Locus task. We've also implemented all of the boilerplate code that is required to establish a connection to MongoDB, uh, to create collections, indexes, and run your queries against different members of your replica set. But um, distributed uh, running of distributed queries is not the only thing that um, Mongo Locus can be used for. It is also very important to generate data and do it on efficiently. This has been um, highlighted by Timo. So in order to simplify tasks like generating the names, addresses, credit card information, we've thrown in the uh, Python um, paper into the mix um, that uh, is well known for uh, working well for such type of tasks. And finally, we provide all of the artifacts required to run Locust um, in a Kubernetes environment. We provide a base image and the possibility of dynamically mounting your um, classes and configs um, into these base images, and we also support uh, running Locust in distributed mode um, in EC2-based uh, environments on AWS through our Terraform script. So let's actually see how this works in practice. Timo, would you mind walking us through a demo? Sure. I, yeah. Very sorry. Uh, It was going so well until now. <laughs> All right, great. Then let's look at it in action. So I have prepared a little demo, and the first thing that you will see when you clone our repo is, of course, all the artifacts that Arnett mentioned. Um, don't worry, you don't need to look into every one of these if you want to get started. Actually, when you want to start testing your MongoDB, there are just three files we're going to look at, the, uh, at in detail. So one is the Python code called load test, which actually defines a testing scenario as Arduinet has shown. And we will deep dive a bit into this in a minute on what I'm actually using for my demo. The next one is the Python code called settings. And in settings, we define the connection string for the MongoDB and the weights for the task. And everything is done via uh, environment variables. And that's basically it. Now you're all set to go. And the last part is, because I'm running my demo on Kubernetes, I use the redeploy shell script, which automatically creates all the resources on Kubernetes. So let's look a bit into the load test that I've defined here. Basically, it looks pretty similar to what Arjun has shown. Um, in my, let's say, use case scenario, I say I'm testing for a CRM application, and I've added actually one more task, and that is the bottom one which does about interest because, you know, a CRM application, I might have uh, batch operations running at evening or whatever. So for that, I will be utilizing bot insert. Also, one more thing that you can see is I mentioned logical dependencies, right? And what you see here is that every worker actually caches the names that it has inserted into the database and utilize it for the sign statement. That way, we can make sure that we actually have results that will return and making sure you know that we're not running just a query that has zero results and therefore highly performant. All right, then let's look at it in action. Once you have defined your um, test, you are in the repository of MongoLocus and you use the redeploy shell script to deploy the Kubernetes resources. And what it actually does is it first deletes all the artifacts that might already exist and then redeploys it just in case that we have done any changes to um, the file. And the UI is exposed on port 8089. So we use uh, port forward to have this port of the master pod accessible on our machine. 
once we run that, we can return to the browser, refresh the page here, and we will see the local CI. Now what you can see is that we have already 10 workers available for testing. However, I'm running a huge MongoDB cluster, so I need a, a couple of more workers to actually put it under pressure. So I will use the kubectl scale command to scale my deployment to, let's say, 200 replicas to get some strong pressure on the MongoDB deployment. Once I've used the command, I can return to the UI, and on the top right, you can see now that workers are being added as pods are created and added to the local cluster. Once I've reached 200, I can start my test. I will use 200 users with a spawn rate of users per second um, and start my test. Now on the top right, you see how many users are currently spawned. I see the statistics for each task that I've defined. And for each task, I see how many requests have been um, executed up to this point, how many might have failed. I see the response times in, re uh, in regards of the median, the 95 percentile, the average, mix, man, uh, max and min values um, over the whole period of testing. If I want to look into the historic, let's say, development of my response times, I can go to the charts. And on charts, I actually see the overall uh, response times uh, over time. So here I can see at the moment we are running 130,000 requests per second against my MongoDB, and I can see how that developed over time in regard of response time. Let's look at the Atlas cluster that I'm using. I'm actually using an M60 on AWS, and we can use the real-time um, dashboard here to see what's actually happening on the database system. So here I can see um, that I have a high disk IOPS, um, and my CPU is, is at around 20 to 30 percent. And now I can conclude my own um, findings on that. I could say, you know what, I want to see how that behaves with an M50 instead of C with less storage or the same amount of storage, or I could increase my storage if I say I want to have more uh, requests per second being processed. And I could either say I stop this test, change my cluster, and rerun it, or actually let it run for hours or days, and then I would just see how the size of my cluster affects by response time. Once I'm happy with um, the test results, I go to the uh, download tab here. I download the report, and that actually gives me an overview of all the tabular information as well as the interactive charts here. Yeah, and that easy it can be to run your own load testing, and back to you, Adilet. So let's go over the things we talked about today. We have shown you how easy it is to develop your custom test for data generation with Mongo Local. And also shown you how easy it is to deploy it into the Kubernetes environment. And during the demo, we have shown that it is easy or possible to achieve uh, hundreds of thousands of requests per second. So here is a re uh, link to the repo again. Go on GitHub, clone it, and start testing your MongoDB workloads today. Thank you for your time and come talk to us if you have any.